I started growing my own chili peppers, <laughs> which I don't know, don't ask me why. I just got bored and wanted to start with something. And it's been such a great opportunity to call my grandma and say, hey, can you tell me what, you know, how often do I need to water? What do I do with this? How do I do that? I could have Googled all of that, but it was so nice. And she felt so good sharing her gardening experience with me. And this is just something where we can forge that connection with other people just by reaching out and asking a question. As we change, the, the methods that we use to create change, the methods that we use to, to stick our, our habits to, to certain behaviors, those change as we change as well. So it's constantly shuffling around to find what is the most effective for that place and time. And laying out all the different tools gives you the opportunity then to pick and choose and see which ones are going to work best in those moments. And with all the guests we have, I mean, we're inundated with tools all the time on this podcast. I can only go through so much. So it's always thinking about where I'm at in a, in a place, in time, in a mindset, and then start to look at the tools that I've, I think will benefit me most in those moments as they're all laid out at this point. And I know for myself, one of those biggest opportunities for change was the ability to say no. And Katie shared with us how important just saying no was for her to create change in her own career and make a larger impact. Many of us are people pleasers by nature, myself mm. included, and it can be difficult to turn down what looks like amazing opportunities in your life. But that draws time and resources away from some of your bigger goals and aspirations. And if you don't become strategic in your ability to say no, and you don't guard that precious time, well, it's hard to create the change that you're looking for in your life when you're doing everything for others. I think it's easy for human beings to want binary answers. It makes things mm. so easy. Oh, yeah. So, however, if you find out or see that you have been a people pleaser in the past, you're going to have the tendency then to go the other way. Well, now I'm never going to get taken advantage of ever again because I'm going to say no all the time. Well, now you just closed yourself off to opportunity. So you have to learn those skills that allow you to place boundaries and, and work within those boundaries so that you are open to opportunities. You just can't just shut everything off and say, I'm not doing this anymore. That's certainly where the skill of all of it comes in. It's about how well can you draw boundaries and how well mm. can you live within those boundaries and, and then as well as being able to be flexible in, within those boundaries when you need to be. And that's, that is something that takes practice. This is why self-development isn't something that you do or you've you learned and you've turned it on. It's something that evolves with you as you evolve. And of course, it's so refreshing to hear Katie share that she wasn't ready to trust her gut just yet. She had to bring in others to help her reinforce the no, to learn what truly was working for her and what truly wasn't working for her in terms of where she was committing her time and resources. And so many of us, we don't like asking for help, myself included, that's why I'm speaking uh, from my first perspective of I also don't like asking for help. It's difficult for me, but it's a skill now that I've had to bring into my own life to create the space for change that I'm looking for, just like Katie bringing in her peers and creating a no group where they bounce ideas off of, is this a good fit for me? Not trusting your gut at first. And as she shared, over time, she's learned now to trust her gut a lot more clearly. But when we're getting started and we're excited about things, it can be difficult to choose the right opportunities for us to pursue. AJ brought up something there that's incredibly important that I want to dig into, which is asking for help. I think with the invention of the internet, everything now, all the information that we need about everything is on it. So it's easy for us to think about, oh, well, I need to do this, so I'm going to go read a blog on it. I'm going to go watch this pod or listen to this podcast on it, and maybe I'll check out this book, and now I'm going to figure it out myself. Well, that's very noble of everybody wanting to do those things. And you should, you should put yourself into it so you can sort of learn what's going on. However, if you want it done right, and if you want it done well, you might have to ask for help because you're going to be doing things for the first time and they're going to be a mess. And I've said on this show multiple times 
about being at the level of your own incompetence because you should find yourself there multiple times uh, throughout the year because you should be pushing yourself. However, if you don't want to get frustrated with with learning new things all the time, to have some guidance is incredibly important. And also, this is a nice way of connecting to people as well. I've heard it uh, said to me this year that asking for help honors the helper or something along those lines. And this year, I've really started reaching out, asking people in my in my circle for help with things that I could have easily found on the internet. Because for yeah. me, it was nice to reach out to my brother and ask about, you know, how the best airbrush or any recommendation he has on 3D printing. Um, I started growing my own chili peppers, <laughs> which I don't know, don't ask me why. I just got bored and wanted to start with something. And it's been such a great opportunity to call my grandma and say, hey, can you tell me what, you know, how often do I need to water? What do I do with this? How do I do that? Could have Googled all of that, but it was so nice. And she felt so good sharing her gardening experience with me. And this is just something where we can forge that connection with other people just by reaching out and asking a question. Again, that human binary problem comes into effect where you want to learn something well enough so when you hire the person to come help with that project, you can get in and speak to the person and you know what it's going on and what it's going to look like rather than just say knowing that you have to do something and then hiring somebody to do it and then expecting them to do it well and you don't even know what they're doing i feel really good about a lot of the things that i tried and failed at and we'll talk about this in a bit uh this year of just because of learning new things however even in the realm of social media something i did a lot at the beginning of the year and it was apparent Uh, just how much I, I didn't like working in that area, but doing so much of it uh, allowed us when we hired out for that to work with the person that we brought in because of having been there and having done some of those things. Well, I, I think it's so beautiful when we can ask others for help simply because it's one of the greatest compliments you can pay someone that you actually need their support in your life. And in the situation of growing peppers, I mean, To ask your grandma and get that feedback and to learn instead of just going to some random website and, and watching a quick video. Like those are the bonds and the connections that we love shaping on this show. And for me, it's just so heartwarming. You know, we have WhatsApp groups in our X Factor community. We have WhatsApp groups from all of our boot camps that we've run over the years that are very active with participants. And we love hearing how bringing on some of these guests to have these great interviews with have created opportunities for wins in our clients' lives. How you're taking these lessons and really applying them, that's really the most heartwarming for both me, Johnny, and of course, Michael as well, and Unstoppable with other clients. Because I think many of us, it's easy to consume. It's easy to take in all of this information. And of course, we give you a lot. There's a ton of books. But it's really, a, how do you take these strategies, apply them in your life and see an impact? That's what fascinates me the most. Let's hear your favorite, Johnny. For me, I had a, an extra layer of new added to this year because I had moved to Vegas in the middle of a, a global pandemic. And I didn't know many people when I had moved here. So that was on top of everything else. and. Uh, so the guest that I'm going to choose here is Dr. Caroline Leaf. I really enjoyed uh, her book on cleaning up your mental mess. And with the added extra layer of, of moving to a new city and building out a social network and, and learning about the town, that was just another piece thrown onto a year of, of growth. And I certainly use a lot of those strategies to keep focused, to keep straight, and untangle a lot of the cognitive distortions and biases that I've had that I had to unlearn. I, I was living in Los Angeles for 10 years. And with, with a move, you're also dealing with the subtle changes in the cultures of the places that you're moving to. I just, even though Las Vegas is, what, four and a half hours away from Los Angeles? It's an incredibly different world. People here are very different. And this is a very transient town. It's a tourist town. People are in and out. However, 
outside of just the strip here in Vegas, you learn that there's a whole other world of Las Vegas and people here are very proud of uh, this area. And, the, and certainly the locals here, getting the sports teams that they recently have added to Vegas, there's this sense of pride that Vegas has come into its own as a city. And it's really interesting to follow that and, and to feel that and moving here. So Caroline's book and podcast came at a right time when being isolated from your friends and family that you've created for yourself for the last 10 years, throwing yourself into a new town where people are a little bit hesitant to, to be reaching out due to everyone wearing face coverings and <laughs> everything that is going on along with a global pandemic. It certainly wasn't easy, but it had certainly been fun. I remember specifically that episode, what was one of my favorite takeaways was her just simply sharing how she's used her exact strategies with her daughter. And I know mm -hmm. that many of the clients we work with have kids. And after you self-actualize and you're working on yourself, you look at, okay, how can I support this growth in my children? And to hear her share that story of the treadmill experience with her daughter and how she's actually helped coach her daughter go through that exact same process to declutter some of that mental baggage and unpack some of that trauma in a way that benefits her, creates momentum towards a goal and allows her to build the skills she needs to overcome adversity. Those are the, the anecdotes and the stories that I love from the show because many of the parents in our audience reached out after that episode and shared that, wow, it's so great to hear how guests are applying these skills with their own families. I think many of us read books and we think about, oh, you know, this is how I can apply it in my own life. But when it comes to children, we're having an impact on them, whether we like it or not. They're modeling us in a lot of ways. And if we can bring these tools to the forefront for them, well, we can help them overcome challenges that would probably keep them from taking some of our coaching programs. That is actually something or an idea that I often like to upload into the minds of those that are in our Q&A sessions, whether it's X Factor Accelerator or Unstoppable, where someone might be struggling with something that's, you know, it's a little bit tough to figure out. And of course, we're there to help. But a, a reframe that I like to bring in is saying, like, look, one day in a few years, maybe your kid, maybe your niece, maybe your nephew is going to come to you and say, hey, I'm having this problem. And you will be able to say, you know what, I've been there a few years ago and I figured it out and let me help you. And, and that is that, that reframe that shows them, okay, this is tough right now. Like, of course I have help, but I'm going through a rough patch right now. But, you know, a few years in the future, it's going to be the, the guiding light for someone that I love. And so I'm willingly going through that struggle so that I'm later then able to help them. 